there's going to be a guy that the MMA community would love to see dethrone Patty Pimblett and just like embarrass, finish, whatever, it's it's Tony Ferguson. He's in, in major need of a win. Not just a win against this guy, a win, right? How fair is it that he gets a matchup like this, even though Patty kind of exposed in his last fight, right? You fight uh, Jared Gordon and you win, but like, do you? Like in the eyes of the community, like a lot of people are like, nah, he didn't win that fight, but whatever, robbery, it is what it is. Uh, Tony Ferguson, on the other hand, man, what, six straight losses, right? Six losses in a row. He's been finished in three, no, four. He's been finished in four of his six losses. And now you get Patty Pimblett, who ideally, probably, path to victory is, let me do the thing that Ferguson probably has the best fight, uh, best chance of defending. Let me grapple him. Jiu-jitsu, right? Ferguson still got hands. Grappling, I think that's going to be the thing that just is going to last a lot longer. He can do jiu-jitsu much longer than he can be an explosive MMA fighter. So if Patty Pimblett starts to play the jiu-jitsu game with El Kukui, do we start to see holes opening up where he can win this matchup? What do you think? Absolutely, Derek, especially the longer the fight goes. I mean, we both over here, folks, if you don't know, both of us are huge David Goggins fan, yep. and we see somebody now training with Goggins, <laughs> but it's not just the physical thing that I think why Gog or why uh, El Kakui searched him out. It's that mental game. That that is a six fight losing streak is just something that is is immountable. You know, like it's so hard to overcome. You need to break the chains. You need to get your mind right. And exactly that is why I think that El Kukui sought out David Goggins because he provides that that can't break me style, that can't hurt me, like he says. And that's what Tony Ferguson is going to have to bring to the table with this because if it does end up in that grappling situation like you're talking about, Derek, that's when uh, El Kukui is going to need to feed on it because Patty Pimlet is so good on the ground. He's going to be in situations that are disadvantaged to, uh, to Ferguson and he's going to need to overcome that heel. He's going to need to provide that. And I think it all comes down to can he uh, withstand and not break mentally? You know... I think we're, unfortunately, AJ, going to be on opposite sides of the camp here. I love me some David Goggins. You know that. And my first impression when I saw Tony Ferguson training with David Goggins was, this is not going to be good, man. This is not going to be good. David Goggins, all love about being hard and mental, mental fortitude and all that. What does David Goggins know about MMA? What does he know about MMA? Yo, you need to be with the best MMA trainers in the world. You have world-class talent around you. You don't need to be doing uh, uh, buds training and all that. You know what I'm saying? I just thought it was a kind of a weird look because if there's one thing we know about El Kukui, Tony Ferguson, is that he went on an 11-fight win streak in the bloodiest of waters that you can imagine, and he pulled it out every time. Now, the only reason you go to a David Goggins for mental fortitude training is if you lost that mental fortitude. And you might say, well, you lost six fights in a row. Last time I checked, Charles Oliveira broke the man's arm, hyperextended the man's arm, and he would not tap AJ. There's mental fortitude there. There's no quit in Tony Ferguson. The only quit is when you knock him out and you finish him, and it's been happening a lot. There, David Goggins and nobody else in the world will be able to fix. Yeah, it's, just, it's the Chuck Liddell syndrome. It's the, the old fighter syndrome. You know what I mean? The chin goes after a while. So with all that being said, Thought it was a weird look, but I still think Tony Ferguson got the dog in him, AJ. Can we confirm or deny? He got the dog, right? Oh, absolutely. One of the biggest dogs in the game. And if, if folks, if you don't say the guy that is not willing to quit on himself after losing six times and still get in there with a young gun who's probably going to be or, or has the ability to be a cash cow in the UFC, and you say, fuck it, I'm going to go in there with him and I'm going to dominate this dude, Tony Ferguson's a dog all day long. Oh. Come on. And then and when we just take a look at the numbers of Tony Ferguson's career, man, this, look at Bobby Green, 54, 137. Bobby Green just put a shellacking on him. It was it was not good. Got submitted with the arm triangle. Again, this is just another one. Bobby Green, he was streaking at this time. Now, we saw what happened to Bobby Green. You get knocked out a couple times. Things start getting weird. Nate Diaz, more of a competitive uh, fight, but again, you know, kind of a shellacking. The Chandler fight. Bro, Ferguson actually looked good in that fight until he got stipped. They, people are saying this is the fight that changed everything. This is the fight that everything went downhill. But before that, Benny Dariush, not really a fair comparison per se. But look at the decision victory. Only 23 strikes thrown by Benil. So, you know, competitive. It's just, ah, man, against, the, or maybe, is this where it went downhill? AJ, is it a Gaethje fight? I, I think it's, I mean, that's the start of the six-fight losing streak, but I think getting your head punted in the, the, the top deck by yeah. Michael Chandler, that's probably the, the straw if you broke Camel's back. Well, people were saying this one because what did Ferguson not do? He did not quit on himself. 
he heard it in the apex. It was quiet. Gaethje's punches thudding on his face, and the referee was like, "Bro, you got you got to stop. You can't do. You can't continue to do this." So, all of that being said, man, I say all of that is Tony Ferguson still has the dog, but the results are not speaking for themselves. Patty Pimblett, on the other hand, underperform after underperform after underperform. Right, ever since the UFC debut, we're talking Luigi uh, Vendramini, right? Is that his? Uh, let me see, Luigi. Vendramini, I was right, okay, so this is a fight where Vendramini stiffed him, right, and then Patty came back, got the uh, got the choke, uh, no, got the knockout win, got that done, Rodrigo Vargas, right, so Kazula Vargas, the very aggressive guy, but not the highest caliber opponent, submitted, Jordan Levitt submission, I was impressed there, AJ, I was, I was impressed, and then you go to Jared Gordon, and it's just Tony Ferguson, Jared Gordon, I don't know, I don't know, man, in a nutshell, Patty should win this fight, most likely, right? But Tony Ferguson has a real shot at winning. What does Patty need to avoid to do in terms of um, not, I don't want to say dropping the ball here, but dropping the fight that you're supposed to win? What does he need to avoid? Getting into that dog fight, getting into that ego battle. That's one of the biggest things I think Tony Ferguson's going to try to do is make this ugly. The uglier it can be, the more you know, a uh, vicious and bloody and everything that goes into that and the chaos that ensues and in, in what could be an old school classic Tony Ferguson fight is exactly what Patty Pimblett does not want to see himself in. Sure. Can he thrive in that situation? Yes, he can. He's a dog as well. But if you're able to be clean, technical and precise against uh, El Kukui, you're going to be looking good, man. You're going to be doing very, very well. You just got to time your shots, time your approach and really get things done. But if El Kukui is able to, kind of kind of withstand the volley right like you get you get punched a couple times you're going in you're scrambling things get stood up again you're back you're breathing better than ever and patty pimblett's in there like damn what do i need to do to put this guy away we've seen patty falter in his fights as of recently and that's going to be the key for tony ferguson's victory so if patty pimblett can avoid that that's what i think is going to do the best what about you Derek? is there any nuance that i'm missing right here no, I'm in the same exact camp. I think if he tries to stand and bang with Ferguson and have some type of highlight real KO, that's where he's he probably might get knocked out. Ferguson has power. Power is the last thing to go, right? I just think that uh, best path to victory is grappling, even though that's where Ferguson's still going to have a lot of skill right there. But I think Patty is, come on, man. Patty is what? Uh, 28. 28 years old, man. This dude is not even in the prime of his career yet. So... <laughs> I see it, Patty, minus 260, I think is more than a fair price to pay right here, especially if Patty comes motivated and wants to put on a show for for the people, right? Which is what he does. This is the Patty show. So uh, I always feel bad picking against El Kukui, but Patty Pimblett, let's win some money, folks. Let's do it. All right.